And I said, Amazon, Amazon, <laughs> Mr. Bezos, <laughs> will you please find me some beige and mohair that I could have tomorrow? And they did. Cast it on, baby. I'm Nora, and this is also known as Nora Nance. Hey there, I'm Nora, and this is also known as Nora Knits. Welcome or welcome back to my fourth knitting podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Day. I have some things to chat about, a few whips to show you, maybe a new cast on, I don't know. And yeah, I, I'm just excited to talk about what I have today. I feel a little bit like I look like a newscaster or something, but I'm pushing past that so that we could get this episode filmed. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. No need to mess around. Uh, I'm going to start first with my whips, my work in progress. And the first thing that I have to show you my progress on is my core Chauvin cardigan by Tanya Hodney. So this is a cardigan that I have been knitting in Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Oatmeal. It's a bottom-up cardigan that features this really beautiful basket weave pattern. Oh my gosh, I'm just realizing I messed something up. <laughs> this is a great way to start. <laughs> I guess this is why we do this, huh? Okay. Well, geez. All right, so I'll have some unknitting to do <laughs> later. We'll have some frogging to do. I was about to say that um, last week when I filmed, I had mentioned that my goal was to get this cardigan into Aladdin vest status. And I was actually going to just go ahead and do the, there's a three needle bind off that attaches the front two panels to the back panel. And I was going to do that this morning before I filmed. And I thought, no, let me just go ahead and start filming and I'll, I'll worry about that later. But this has actually kind of been, um, it's been dwindling a little bit for me. I, I lost steam just a touch after some other things became a little more exciting in my life. <laughs> and so it's just been, I, I think the thing is too, I've knit this pattern before. So there's not that excitement of like the first time you knit something and you're like, what is this going to look like when it's done? And you're kind of just wondering how it's going to go the whole way through. So I know exactly what this is going to look like when it's done. At this point, this is very much a product knit and not a process knit for me, which is completely fine because I also don't have a major deadline for this. This is a staple for my wardrobe. This is something that I plan to wear for years to come. So this isn't necessarily the most exciting knit of my life. It's really just something that I want to own. Um, so that's okay. I'm just going to keep chugging along on this. Uh, but I'll, <laughs> you can see, apparently, apparently I was really not paying attention to what I was doing and I knit one of these basket weaves way too short. How did I manage to do half the amount of what was called for in that basket weave? So fortunately, it's only a few rows back, so it's not the end of the world to frog that, but I, I guess I'm glad that I noticed this before I did that three needle bind off. So see, that all worked out. Um, <laughs> whoops. But really, there's not much to report here. It's it's still going strong. I actually am loving the way that this yarn is knitting up. I mean, you could tell that this is it's a hundred percent wool, but it's, it's probably also due to the stitch pattern. You know, there's a lot of room for those stitches to move and drape. So I think that once this is done, it's going to be so amazing to have in my wardrobe. It's going to be really, it's super squishy. There's a lot of, um, stitch kind of clustering in there. So it's going to be a really kind of doughy, doughy, cozy knit to own. Um, so I am excited about that. I love the color. I love the way that this is working up. I don't know that I've mentioned yet that this was my first time doing the tubular cast on on, on this one as it is a bottom up cardigan. And though I've knit this cardigan once before, the first time I knit it, I didn't do the tubular cast on because I just could not figure out how. <laughs> so 
Uh, this time I did it and oh my goodness, is it gorgeous. I love the cast on edge. So I'm loving the product of this. I'm just kind of over knitting it at this point. That being said, the next um, part of this, so today I guess I'll frog back and fix that basket weave where I ended things a little bit short. Who knows? Who knows what I was thinking? So I'll frog back today and do that. And hopefully, I don't know yet. I feel like I'm, I might want to just spice things up on this knit and go ahead and start the button band, which uh, the pattern calls for a ribbed button band, but I think I, I'd like to try doing a double knit button band. So I'll be slightly modifying the pattern in that way. And I'm curious uh, how that process is even going to go. I've never done any double knitting other than when you are approaching a, a tubular bind off. So I've never done that significant amount of uh, of double knitting. So I'm curious how that's going to go. If you have any recommendations on videos to watch or patterns to follow to modify a cardigan with an applied button band on how to add that double knit button band, please let me know down below because I'm going to be searching for something to, to help me out there. So for now, that's where this is at the moment. The neighbors decided it was time to do some construction right now. Don't they know that I'm filming? Weird. <laughs> anyway, next step on this is going to be to undo the back. Fix my mistake. Three needle bind off the front panel to the back panel. And, and then, I don't know, I'll decide from there if I want to go in with the sleeve or if I want to start the double knit button band. I think that even just doing the small circumference knitting would be a good change up for the stitch pattern, but it's a lot of repetition. I enjoy the stitch pattern of it. I just, um, other things caught my attention. So really quick wrap up on that one. Uh, please leave your recommendations if you have any for double knit button band tutorials down below. All right. So that wraps up what I have. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That wraps up what I have for this week on my core shaft and cardigan. We're still chugging away on this one, just taking our time because other things have become a little bit more exciting. So let's see what those things are. For starters, I am here to update you on the ranunculus journey. <laughs> and a journey it is. This is the ranunculus, of course, by Midori Hirose. If not the most popular pattern on Ravelry, definitely one of the most popular patterns with over 20,000 people who have posted their projects on Ravelry. And when you think about that, there's so many people who don't use Ravelry, who don't post their projects. So we're talking a lot of people have knit this pattern. And I am new to the ranunculus pattern. I'm learning that many of you are also new to the ranunculus pattern. And I'm excited that we are trying this out together. It is such a hyped pattern, maybe overhyped. That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. I'm dying to know what is so special that everyone's talking about. I need to know. I need to know. So my ranunculus has made significant progress since last week, especially considering the fact I started over. <laughs> so if you guys saw my last project, you project? Oh my goodness. Podcast. You will know that I knit my neck, neckline, neckline. I knit the neck, the neck band. Oh my gosh. I knit my neck bands uh, a bit too snug. Oh gosh. <laughs> And so I decided to go in and just start from beginning between how small the neckline was and there were some issues I was having with some of the textured stitches in the pattern. So number one, I want to address the neckline. So you guys had me cracking up because I... <laughs> I was talking about how originally I cast on 90 stitches, but miscounted and wound up with 96. And then I cast on the original amount of stitches that the pattern recommended. And then it was too small and there weren't enough. And you guys like, you guys were like, maybe, maybe we needed 96 stitches. <laughs> and I was laughing. <laughs> uh, but what actually happened was 
when I knit the version of my ranunculus that I had shown you last week, that was me following the pattern specifically. So the original ranunculus that I started, because I've started this, I think, four or five times now, the original one that I did, I skipped to the 90 stitches that you are at after all of your increases in the neckline. But when I started the version that I showed you last week, I cast on the 30 stitches that are recommended for the smaller neckline. And that was not enough. So in all of my research and preparation for the ranunculus, I did a lot of math at one point, converting all of the original pattern numbers to match my gauge. So I, I was using ratios and cross multiplication to find out what stitch count would be best to knit this at the wrong gauge. And ultimately, I decided to follow some of those numbers for my cast on on this version of the ranunculus. So the pattern calls for a cast on of 30 stitches for the smaller neckline, which is the neckline that I want. And based on my ratio and the math that I did, I decided this time around I should cast on 45 stitches instead. I had a lot of people saying I should just go ahead and cast on the larger neckline with um, with my smaller, with my gauge that was off, um, suggesting that it would give me the look of the smaller neckline that I wanted in the end. But in my original experiment, take one of the ranunculus, I started with the 90 stitches and I felt like it was a little bit too loose. I really do want this to have quite a tight neckline because I want to wear this as much as possible. And I find that if I have a shirt that has a nice snug neckline, I'm just the most comfortable in it. And I feel like I can work in it. And I feel like I could just do anything I want to in it. So that's the look I'm going for with this. Uh, so this time around, I cast on 45 stitches. I, <laughs> I haven't tried it on yet. <laughs> we shall see if that was a mistake because I am just about done with all of the uh the yoke so i i've done the the lace stitches in the yoke my wrap stitches i figured out what i did wrong when i re-knit this sweater so the wrap stitches are made up of essentially a two row sequence so in the first row you are wrapping the stitches. In the second row, you're going in with decreases and that's what's giving you ultimately that wrapped stitch look. So what I realized that I had done was I did those wrap, sti wrap stitches, wrap stitches. I did those wrap stitches at the correct rate. I did those correctly. It was the decreases that I did wrong. And I think that it can be kind of confusing. So if you've never knit the ranunculus before, when you encounter those wrap stitches, remember what I said in my last podcast about just noticing the technique that's in the video on how to wrap the stitches, but make sure that you're reading the numbers that are in front of you at that point in the pattern because the video tutorial and the first way that the wrap stitches are presented in the pattern, they don't match up. It's not the tutorial for that exact line. So you're watching the tutorial to note the technique, but reading the stitches in the pattern to make sure that you are doing those wraps at the correct intervals. So that's the, the row of loop stitches, wrap stitches, loops. I don't know what the heck we're going to call them. The next row is includes a bunch of knit two togethers. And I think it does mention it, but it might be later on. When you're doing the knit two togethers, you're going to see your regular stitches on the needles, and then you're going to see that wrap stitch. And the wrap stitch on your needle comes in at an angle, so you can identify it. What I found was best to do 
was sort of use my right hand needle to separate those stitches so that I could clearly see when I was going to knit two together, I had the the wrap stitch plus another stitch. I think it's in the other order. So you have a stitch and a wrap stitch. What I had done the first time was my wrap stitches were leaning up straight a little bit more than they were angled. And so I think that they had slipped off of the stitches that they were actually supposed to be wrapped around. So if you've never knit the ranunculus before, or if you've had an issue with these wrap stitches, pay attention during that row, directly following the row when you're doing the wrap, the loop stitches. It's the knit two together when it's very important that one of the stitches that you're knitting two together with is the wrap stitch. And that's what's sort of making sure that it grabs that loop that you've pulled up in the row prior and securing it down around the stitches that it's wrapping. And if you don't do that, you're not going to get the effect that the stitch is wrapping and looping around the two or three stitches, whatever it is at that interval. So that is what I want to suggest that you pay attention to. Once I crossed that bridge, I had the row of the pearls and the slips, uh, got into my eyelets. Those are looking great. Came back to more wrap stitches. And once you've finished all of that lace work, all of that texture work, that's when you move into the raglans. And let me tell you, <laughs> when I hit the ra- Oh, see? The way in which I was relieved by the time I got to the raglan stitches or the raglan increases, that was, uh, I needed that. (laughs) I knew that was going to (laughs) happen. Amazon just showed up while I'm filming. (laughs) Anyway, we are struggling through this one today, guys. So once I got to the raglan increases, this became my old reliable stock net in the round project. It's easy enough for me to manage those increases. Um, And so this became my more mindless project. At this point, I'm only a few rows away from actually being done with any of the, the increases. So pretty excited for that to come. And then hopefully we could just move into my stock net in the round, my favorite. Uh, shall we try this on? (laughs) I'm probably going to do it off camera today. (laughs) While I'm moving this onto my try it on tubing. So I have been using, oh, I didn't even mention, I have been using the Malabrigo Susuro yarn in the colorway Frank Ochre. It's a blend of, I believe, merino, linen, silk, And I am still working on the first ball that I started with. And I know someone did mention that I should be helical knitting for this yarn. So I haven't yet had to use helical knitting. This is um, gonna be my first time. But what I have decided is that I'm probably not going to helical knit for an entire skein of yarn. Rather, when I see that I'm getting a little bit closer to the end of this skein, I will start helical knitting and probably just blend two skeins of yarn together uh, rather than the entire project be helical knitting because that'll just, I'll lose my mind. So obviously I am accepting the risk of there being a difference in the dye, a difference in the color. And that's okay with me as long as it is pretty blended, especially considering the fact of how far I am already in the yoke. If there is going to be a difference, uh, it's going to be under the bust anyway. So that's, that's completely fine with me. Won't bother me too much. The drape is really gorgeous and the color. I know you guys have been telling me how much you love the color and I'm so glad that you do because I do too. I think that this color is just perfection. So let me show you some close-ups and then I'll pop this thing on. (laughs) Okay, that was certainly a lot easier today than it was the last time I tried to do that. So it's still a little bit snug 
but not anything that would bother me trying to put it on on a day to day. So let's see where we are at. Holy cow. We are looking good. Ooh. Oh my gosh. The drape of this just feels really luxurious. Um, and let's see. So, okay. So once I'm going to give it a little stretch, I also have seen a lot of people talking about how this yarn apparently blocks out or not blocks. It stretches a lot in blocking, which I, I didn't have that with my swatch, but I also am keeping in mind that a swatch is only so big, so it's not heavy. It's not being worn. So I am keeping in mind that this is going to stretch a little bit. That being said too, I enjoy a good heap of positive ease. So I really don't mind if this winds up being bigger than I plan. Uh, as long as it's not too small, doesn't bother me. It could be any size it wants to be. Any size it wants to be. <laughs> you would be whoever you want to be, little girl. <laughs> but, all right. So like I said, I think that I am about three rows of increases away from being done with what it says for uh, the size that I'm knitting in the pattern, which by the way, I am knitting the size nine with the hopes of achieving something like this size. Funny enough, the first size has a bust circumference of 46 inches, which is sort of my goal for this project. So anything 46 inches or more, I would be really happy with. So let's see if I can reach the back because as I'm pulling the front down, of course the back is coming up but just to see where I'm at. So yeah, I'm knitting the size nine, basically trying to get the size of the first or second size of this sweater. So that's really how far my gauge is off. But I think so far, so good. This seems like it's going to fit very well. Once I finished the increases, I'll try this on again just to see where the yoke is laying if I feel like I need to do any addi additional modifications before I move into the splitting for, for the sleeves and, and knitting the body in the round. So I'll, I'll be trying this on a little bit more now. I kind of enjoy the idea of not trying something on until it's done because I want to be surprised in the end. But obviously that doesn't work when you're knitting something and you want it to fit you properly. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough balance of wanting to surprise myself and wanting something to actually fit. So let me come up one more time and give you just a close-up of how the yoke is looking. I don't know about you guys, but I think that this is so pretty. Uh, I, I am really loving how this is looking. So, And right now, having this on, the yarn feels beautiful. So I think it's every it's worth every bit of a pain it's kind of been to work with. This single ply is just a little bit splitty on wooden needles. I would probably recommend if you're going to use a yarn like this to use a metal needle instead just because a, a sharper point and a little more slip I think would benefit the properties of this yarn. Trying this on like this, would this not be an adorable knit to do sleeveless? but then have little like flutter sleeves on it. Wouldn't that be so cute? Or even to come back and just pick up. I'm not going to do that, but <laughs> if you're feeling more ambitious than I am, I think this would be really cute when you're done to just come back and pick up some stitches and add like a little ruffle, um, maybe almost like the souffle by Penrose and Knits. Wouldn't that be really sweet with just all the lace? I don't know. Well, whatever it is, I am loving the look of this. Things have <laughs> things have taken a turn for the better with the ranunculus. Um, like they say, fourth time's the charm. So I think that that's true for this circumstance. So, so far, so good on take four of the ranunculus pattern. Okay, so if you're paying attention, you might have noticed that I said something was sort of keeping my attention rather than the, the two projects I have on the needles. And also, you might remember me saying something like, I really need a stockinette in the round project. 
well, <laughs> a test knit came along that really caught my eye. And the ranunculus turned into a stock in it in the round project. So I justified applying for the test knit. Of course, thinking I've applied for so many test knits and I never get it. So certainly I won't get into this one, especially considering this is a bigger designer and she wouldn't want little old me test knitting for her. And um, then I got an email that I got into the test knit and <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> so I am test knitting the pronunciation check. Lika. Lucka. In Swedish, this is said as Lika. 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 So, yep. Okay. I am test knitting the Lika sweater for Sorry Nordland. And I'm so excited about this. I actually had seen her sort of teasing these photos, had no idea that it was uh, still being designed. I, I figured it was already test knit coming out. So I didn't know what the heck was going on. And I had saved all of those photos thinking, oh, that'll be on my two knit list at some point. And then I saw the call for the test knit and I thought, oh, let me apply for that. I like, would love to knit that. And I got the email that I got in and I was so excited. And I was trying to think of how I wanted to knit it. So it's a, it's a top down sweater. I'm not going to go too much about the pattern until the pattern comes out. I'll just kind of share a little bit of my thoughts on this and show you my progress, uh, weekly, but it's top down and it has this beautiful chevron pattern all across the sweater with really just interesting stitch details across and it just looks so it has a is it like a spunky classic look to it classic with a twist which is always my favorite and i was thinking of all the different color combinations that i could do for these chevron stripes and at first i was thinking of going something just very fall, very uh, like gingerbread color with burgundy stripes or something like that. And then I remembered uh, Rebecca Klo of the Crayabea Knitting Podcast has a cardigan and she, one of her test knitters knit it. It's a striped cardigan and one of her test knitter, knitters knit it with a cream and a boucle yarn instead of different colored stripes. And Rebecca herself knit a sample with the same idea. And the more I thought about it, the more I, I thought, I think I would like something a little bit more low contrast to let this chevron be a more subtle detail in this knit. And then I remembered. So I've mentioned before that I really enjoy thrifting for yarns and I've been pretty successful in finding things. And I remembered that I had a few skeins of knit picks. It's a DK knit sorry, it's a DK weight knit or fingering held with lace. And I remember that I had some knit picks DK and it was in their undyed base. And I had found a boucle yarn on a cone at some point. And I was like, that is the perfect combo. So I went and I checked and sure enough, I had five skeins of the knit picks DK wool base and I have an abundance of this boucle. And so I thought I would only need to order another skein or two of the knit picks and I would meet the yarn requirements. And I was so excited. I knit a swatch and I was wrestling that yarn. <laughs> the, the sweater is knit is suggested to be knit on 3.5 millimeter needles. And I, I think that the Knit Picks yarn lied to us. That is a worsted weight yarn. There are no ifs, ands, and buts about it. The swatch that I got is incredibly dense. I was wrestling that yarn the whole way through, but I thought, let me just try and maybe I'll meet Gage. And I, I didn't get anywhere close to Gage. But I was glad that I knit the swatch. And I was going this uh, past weekend, I was in the area of Webb's America's Yarn Store, yarn.com. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. They have a location in Massachusetts where I happened to be working over the weekend. 
And so I figured it was perfect timing if I if this swatch didn't work out literally Friday night when I swatched it. Saturday, I was going to be near Webb's and I would just go pick up the yarn because the deadline for this test knit is the body and an arm need to be done by October 8th. So we don't have a lot of time. And so I needed to get yarn right then and there. And at this point, I became really married to this swatch that I knit up. So I was trying to find something that would give me as close to this look as I could get without A, spending a ton of money. And also with meeting the gauge, that's the one thing that she says is, you, you know, you have to meet gauge for this test knit. So that was what I did. I went to Webs and we bought a couple of things. So I knew that I was looking for a cream colored yarn and I was also looking for something to hold with the boucle yarn that I have because the boucle yarn that I have is somewhere between a fingering and a sport weight. So when I held it single, it was too fine. It was too sparse. I could see through it in my swatch and I didn't like that for the boucle texture. But when I held it double, again, I was wrestling this yarn. So what I wound up getting for the main color of this body was, uh, it's called Jaeger spun. I, you know what? I've never bought yarn like this where it's on a cone and I think it's primarily intended for weaving, but it does say weaving and knitting and it's a 100% wool. It's in an undyed, just beautiful cream color. This is the softest wool I've ever felt. It's a fingering weight. It's so soft to the touch. This cone has 2,240 yards on it, and this cone um, originally retails for $56 dollars, which I didn't think was too bad for that much fingering weight, undyed wool. I mean, I'll use that again. Really excited to find that. So this is also going to be my first time holding two yarns together to knit something, which is wild because everyone does that. But for cost and, um, for cost, <laughs> for cost and for cost, uh, I have only knit with a single strand of yarn before. So this is my first time holding two strands together, but I figured why not? This is the perfect time to try it, especially because it seems like the gauge that Sari was recommending for this sweater was leaning on the lighter side of a DK weight yarn. And I probably have an easier time getting that the way that she did with a fingering and a lace weight. So that's my fingering weight yarn. My lace weight yarn is this incredible incredibly soft. Oh my gosh, this is the softest thing I've ever felt. So this is 80% alpaca, 20% silk. It is a lace weight yarn on this cone. It's got the most gorgeous little halo to it. So does the wool actually. There is 1,736 yards on this cone and this clocked in at $29.99. So between those two yarns, we were already in for one of the more expensive sweaters that I've knit before then I still needed something to hold with my boucle. And the color story that I'm going for with this is to sort of have this cream and then just like an off-white <laughs> in the boucle. And apparently no one wants to carry this a mohair in off-white. I don't know. I can't find it. So I wound up purchasing, I wound up purchasing two balls of this Valley Yarns, which is Webb's America's Yarn Store brand, which also is the alpaca silk. They're both from this Valley Yarns. And I purchased two balls of their uh, their mohair. So 72% kid mohair, 28% mulberry silk. And this is just their off. I think, I think that they did have a, a brighter white. They looked exactly identical to me. So I bought two balls of this, but when I did my swatch again, which by the way, I did take out, I did pull out the swatch and I, I used it to knit with because this was finer yarn than I've used before. So I didn't want to waste that much yarn on my swatch. When I knit my swatch and I added this white mohair to my off white sort of beigey boucle, it completely neutralized any difference in the color and the swatch, you couldn't even tell that there were different yarns being knit with. So that was an issue. And at that point, I was already a few swatches in and I've just been on the lookout for some 
off white, a, be- a beige colored mohair. I went to three different yarn stores and couldn't find anything. Have you guys noticed that your yarn store, your local yarn store, do they carry a lot of mohair? Um, this was the first time I was really looking for any and I didn't find a huge selection of color options. So, but I also have a really small deadline, so I didn't want to order anything. So I wound up getting started on the sweater. Let me show you the progress so far. Oh, I'm also going to tell you, I bought needles at Webb's because while I was wrestling <laughs> the, <laughs> the DK weight yarn for my swatch, I thought maybe the wooden needles were just giving me a lot of friction. And the nature of this stitch pattern, you wind up having a lot of stitches all in one spot on your needles. And I thought metal needles would be easier to work with. So another purchase that I made were the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina needles. And I'm loving these so far. They've got a great tip to them, very pointy. But what I really like is they're heavy almost, which I'm enjoying. I, I they feel they feel substantial in your hands, and it's a great feeling. They don't have that whoosh, whoosh sound that the Chow Goo needles had that really bothered me, and they feel more substantial than the Addy Turbos did, and they fit onto my Knit Picks. Uh, uh, cords. So really loving these needles so far. I also, I try to be very transparent with you guys on the prices of everything. So I purchased at Webb's the two cones of yarn, alpaca silk, 100% wool, two balls of mohair, and I bought a pair of needles. And I spent $93.90, which I I think in the grand scheme of things, I made out. I did a really, I, I feel like I was very smart about my choices and I really went through it and, and went through every option I had there. So I'm not going to be using the mohair in this project, but it's white mohair. It will get used. And I'm actually really impressed with that because I bought the needles and all of the yarn for this project and I'm going to have plenty left over. I think that that was a pretty good price. So anyway, this is where I'm at so far on my, and I already forgot how to say it, Lika, 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 Lika sweater. <laughs> and I'm obsessed. I can't stop knitting this, which is good because we have a deadline, but I cannot stop. I'm so in love with this stitch pattern. Uh, I've learned something this week and that is lace, not my favorite. Texture and specifically, I enjoy repetition. I enjoy repeating the same thing over and over again. I enjoy the flow that that puts me into and the way that that can become just so meditative. So I'm loving this so far. The fabric I'm getting with the alpaca silk and the 100% wool together is really beautifully drapey and it's very soft. I will say when you knit up these two yarns, they feel a little toothier than they do on the cone, but uh, after blocking, because I blocked my swatch, they felt delightful, delightful. I should have taken pictures of the swatch. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to trust me on that one. So I'm not going to go too much in detail about the pattern since this is a test knit, and I'll just give my final thoughts on the pattern in the end. I just wanted to kind of introduce you guys to my leaky. So let's see. Obviously, you're looking at the back of the sweater here. It's just curling up so much. So I just wanted to show you kind of the progress of where I'm at. And uh, so far, just absolutely loving it. It looks way more complicated than it is. It's a stitch pattern that I am enjoying. It's been fun to work up. So far, so good with that. And while I was sitting here, I knew that that was going to happen. So I mentioned I couldn't find a... This is the swatch from the, the Knit Picks version I did, but you could see the boucle yarn that I'm using, which literally is like a carpet on this little swatch because it was so dense. And I knit first with it held double and then with it held single. And that was when it was held single. I just didn't like the holes I was getting in it. So the mohair is to be held with that boucle. And I was trying to find something that was a beige color just to give very minimal color contrast and something to just fill in the holes. So 
I was looking online, I was looking in stores around me, nothing was gonna be here on time, I couldn't find a color that I liked, and I don't know about you, but I get this thing when I, I get an idea in my head and I know exactly how I want something to turn out, and then I retroactively have to go find the things to make that happen, and I think that's literally why I'm a maker, that's why I make things, because I just know what I want, and then when I can't find it, I'm like, well, I'll just figure that out myself. So I even thought about dyeing the boucle. I wasn't going to go that far. I'm not a, I'm not a yarn dyer yet. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll fall down that rabbit hole at some point. Anyway, I turned to Amazon and I said, Amazon, Amazon, Mr. Bezos, <laughs> will you please find me some beige and mohair that I could have tomorrow? And they did. So it arrives while we're sitting here, impromptu sort of unboxing. You'll get my first impression of this. My hope is that this is going to be the perfect color and the perfect weight, and it's going to be perfect, and it's going to make my sweater perfect, and, and I don't have to hunt for yarn anymore. So that's the hope. Crinkle, 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 crinkle. There's a lot of crinkling. I'm sorry, that's offensive. Ooh, this is exciting like Christmas, huh? This <laughs> is going to be white. Oh, no, it's not white. Hey, hey, this might be exactly what I needed. Oh, Ozzy came to sniff and inspect. Did you come to inspect the yarn? Wow, okay, so this is Lana Grossa silk hair, and I'll have to just post what color and stuff I got, but while it's a different tone than I had in mind, I was looking for something a little warmer. My options were very limited in this uh, in this particular venture. And so I wound up with something that has almost a mauve undertone to it. So I would I would describe this color as really less beige and more of a a gray, more of a blushy. I actually don't know. I, I love the color of it. I'm in love with this color. This is gorgeous. I hope that this works out. I'm so excited. Wow, okay. Let's see, my plan is to hold this with a strand of the boucle. And again, I don't want, I like the amount of contrast that I got in my original swatch with the really dense Knit Picks yarn. And the Knit Picks yarn doesn't have any halo to it. So when I had added, when I had swapped that out for the boucle, the boucle, the alpaca silk and wool that I got at Webs, that has tons of halo to it. So paired to next to the boucle, I mean, you just completely lost the texture. Nothing was different. But my issue was that I really liked the contrast that I got in my original swatch. So I really just wanted a slight tonal shift, and I think I'm going to get it out of this. It's just going to be something a little bit the color is going to be a little bit different, but the amount of contrast will be what I'm looking for. Well, that is super exciting. I'm glad that this showed up now so that I could share it with you guys. So hopefully we can get into those stripes uh, this week. Like I said, I have until the 18th of October to finish the body and a sleeve. So it's good that I'm loving this project right now because we got to chug 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 along with it. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see that for the first time my precious sidekick OC got into my yarn. She stole my ball, my cake of the alpaca alpaca silk yarn. And I just said she's so lucky that she is cute. It took me over an hour to untangle it. I'm actually impressed that I had the patience to sit there and untangle it at all. But the cone literally has just slightly more than the amount of yarn that was called for in the pattern. And it's a test knit, so I'm confirming those quantities too. Um, so we, we couldn't spare. <laughs> we had no yarn to spare here. And she she tore that ball up. So I sat, I entangled that whole thing. I wound up having to snip it into a bunch of like little balls, but honestly, that was okay with me. So I'll have some ends to weave in when I'm done. But anyway, so far, so good. I'm looking at this in different lighting now, and it almost has a purpley hue to it. It's going to have to do. It's it's fine. Um, yeah, because compar this compared to the, the oatmeal of the fisherman's wool, 
it definitely leans more pinky purpley, but hey, that is okay. I'm getting the contrast that I wanted. So anyway, that is my story. So <laughs> that's where I'm at for my whips this week. Oh, and I guess my acquisition. Sorry, I just, I rolled right into that. I rolled right into the acquisitions. And now my plans for next week. So let's see. I like to just set these goals for myself, but I will say I felt a little disappointed that I didn't meet my goal for my core Shavin cardigan this week. So these are just things for me to try to keep in mind so that I can stay on track and make sure that I am making the progress on my projects that I really want to. So for the core Shavin cardigan, the goal is going to be to just, I mean, really just get started on a sleeve, on a button band, which means that first I'm going to have to frog, re-knit the back, and three needle bind off the, the shoulder seams, and then get started on whatever, whichever one of those is really calling my name at the time. For my ranunculus, that is going to just be my go-to stuck knit in the round knitting. So we will just see how far that takes us. I love having something like that to just pull out when it's later at night and I can't focus on a pattern anymore and just to have something to keep my hands going. So that's my goal for the ranunculus is literally just to keep knitting on it. Just keep going, stuck in it in the round. And we'll see how long that takes. And really my attention is moving towards this Lique. I, how did I forget to say that already? The Lique sweater? Yeah, the goal is to keep going on that. And honestly, if I'm being ambitious, the goal is to get to the point where I get to work in my second color of the chevron stripe. So I think I have a little ways to go before I get there, but that's okay because I'm loving that project. So those are my plans. Um, if you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram where I try to stay more in touch on my stories. And that's where you got the first look of OC. And I also shared a few clips of being at webs. Um, I've also been sharing some photos of finished object photos of my all good dress that didn't make it onto the video last week. So you can find a lot of those uh, more in time, real time updates over on Instagram uh, at aka Nora Knits. Other than that, I just have to take a moment to again say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you <laughs> um, for watching, for subscribing. Uh, we hit a thousand subscribers. We're, we're at like a generous over a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for commenting. I love chatting with you guys in the comments, your perspective. I love hearing that you guys are enjoying hanging out with me because if it weren't for that, making these videos just wouldn't be as fun. I am here for the community. That's what I'm doing here is, is to have some knitting friends. So thank you for being my knitting friend, uh, even from afar, wherever you are. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And and especially to those who have told your friends to come hang out with me too. Like, that's so cool. So thank you. Just, just all the thank yous. I'm sure it gets annoying to hear, but I, I have to make sure that that goes recognize that I am incredibly grateful for you to be hanging out with me here. Uh, without you, I'm just a girl in a room talking to a camera and that'd be weird. So you guys make it not weird and that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, just thanks for hanging out with me. If you are enjoying these videos, please feel free to come join the crew and you can subscribe, you can like the video, you could do whatever you want. More than anything, please just chat with me in the comments. We could talk all day. Uh, I know I can. But yeah, that that's really all. I, I just want to make sure that I say that and make sure that 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 you guys hear that I am I'm very grateful for for you being here with me so um I think that's all I have uh yeah we did our whips we did our acquisitions it was a little wacky today everyone's out and about apparently happy fall we're we're, we're doing that um so yeah okay I'm, now I'm rambling anyway big ol Big ol' thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Happy knitting. I hope you find something that's bringing you a lot of joy this week. And if you haven't, cast it on, baby. I'm here to support that. And other than that, 
I'm going to see you next time. Uh, I'll be here on Saturday mornings for you. So if you haven't picked up on that, that's the schedule. Big ol' thanks for watching. See you next Saturday morning. And that'll do it for today. Okay, bye! Ha, ha, ha.